back from camp. Um, but I'm glad to be here. Uh, I am going to open some in prayer, and then we will greet about five or seven people around us. So, that will be Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you uh, for the opportunity to just come and worship you. I thank you that you are such a good God and that you move in such miraculous ways. And I just pray that you move in this place this morning and that we can just reflect and uh, talk about what, we, what happened at camp and the decisions that were made. I pray that we can just glorify you through the service. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, welcome to the people around you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
27, page 627, as we sing freely, freely, you have received, freely, freely give. Let's all stand as we sing our call to worship, page 627.
once again, I would like to announce yeah. first, uh, there is no children here today. The children, the children are standing here with us today. So uh, if you guys can hear how life will change, what's crazy is you guys are going to be the youth one day. So it's good to hear about what happened at youth camp, so when you become a youth, you can see what camp is like. Uh, I just want to give the boys a round of applause. Um, they tried. That was good. <laughs> Should have went over a little more before we, before we started. Um, uh, this portion of our service, I'm going to talk a little, about, a little bit about what happened at camp. And you guys are actually hear from the kids what happened in their lives, what decisions were made, and how the Lord worked this week. Um, so, guys, Jesus moved in this place. Um, there's a reason why there's a camp named after it's Jesus, period. And the one who did work was Jesus, period. And uh, so they snapped. Because at camp, I was like, there's not enough oomph on the Jesus period. So it's like, you guys ever heard the sass, like Jesus period, like snap. So if you guys would do it for me, youth Jesus what? Period. Thank you. Uh, they uh, brought a lot of energy. Um, I was tired by the second day. Uh, I lost my voice also by the second day. So um, it was, it was a good week. It was a good week, though. Um, we had a lot of great helpers. Andrea, Sharon, the best cooks in the world. Um, um, let's just say that um, I've never eaten three meals a day consistently, but I definitely did with them. Um, also, we had uh, some, we had Chris Lynn. We had a, uh, a guy named Jonathan Mills. He goes to OEBCM. He came and the worship for us. Um, he did a great job, phenomenal job. Uh, we had Kyle, where's Kyle at? Kyle right there. And then, and then obviously me and Tim, we helped. Uh, the thing is, is we're clapping, we're doing that, but what's awesome is we wouldn't be here without Jesus. We would not be where we're at. Like Tim, I can confidently say that I'm an uncle head, I know Tim's an uncle head, that we would not be here without Jesus. And when I say that Jesus moved, in that place, he, like, I, I came into camp thinking, like, you know when we're here in camp, when you're doing anything, you're like, okay, I'm going to try my best. First night, I immediately got convicted. I was like, I can't do this, but you have to, Jesus. And uh, we always come to camp with our own, like, goal for the week. I was like, we're going to have 55 salvations. We're going to have 60 people we're trying to ministry, or surrender ministry. We have 24 kids, so it's not impossible. <laughs> but um, the Lord humbled me in a way because he's like, hey, this is about me. This is about me working these kids. You can't do anything to change these kids' lives. I'm the only one who can change their lives. And uh, we had a night, Thursday night. There's always a camp night. It's called Cry Night. Um, we went. There was fire. Don't be alarmed. There was no forest fires. You would see it in the news. But we, it was, it was a simple service. We had just gotten back. And we played music. We had them write their sins, whatever they're doing with at home. If it was a hard home life, it was stress, anxiety, um, guilt, whatever it was, we had to write that on a piece of paper, and we burnt that. We put that down there, and these kids, um, they were so receptive to what happened this week, and I just think that, like, when, we, when I say they cried, um, Isaac can attest to this, they were snot everywhere. Um, <laughs> like, I told Isaac, I told Isaac I was going to cry, and I was like, hey, the Lord loves a snotty night, because that's usually when a decision is made, and... I, as much as the snot is good, it was a lot. I just like, <laughs> there was like, um, have you guys ever seen the Nickelodeon, uh, the slime? Like the, that's what it was like. Was, um, but uh, I can't, I'm gonna say it again, the Lord moved so much. And uh, like Kyle and me, Crystal and Mills were talking about it. We had a debrief every night. And we were just like, man, like, it wasn't the acoustics in the cabin, it wasn't just us drumming or us preaching, but the Lord moved. And we're actually gonna have some kids share about what happened this week. Um, you guys remember, you guys have got to line up if you guys wanna start doing that. Um, kids. <laughs> this happens every year. You guys remember last year, we had six kids who were gonna share, we ended up having one. Um, but I'm proud of these kids, and uh, if they so say something off kilter, blame me, because I'm probably talking that. Um, but all right, um, if you guys are ready, I'm going to pray, and then we'll get into what happened this week. All right, bow with you guys. Father, I just take this day. I thank you for those group of rowdy kids that gave up their week, that gave up their uh, their freedom for the week just to come and worship you. I pray that they can just speak about what happened this week to them, what happened, and the change that happened, not just 
physical change, uh, but eternity, our eternity was changed. And Father, I just love you and praise you and thank you for these things. And just stay with you.
I'm not gonna let you guys, that's the most quiet I've ever seen them. <laughs> Okay, so it's always hard to kind of get in front of people, and I can relate to that. Um, but I think the biggest thing that was most impactful for me at camp was um, getting to see a bunch of ready teenagers and a group of people that kind of don't take things seriously. Like getting to see them really plug in with the Lord and like have deep conversations that were not just like surface level, but I really got to know like some kids this week really like, impactful. And I got to like feel the Lord in my life. He was working in me too. Yay! Yeah. Alright, uh, we also have Kyle. Uh, he's been helping us on Wednesdays and uh, I'll just give up his time. <laughs> through the MSU BCM, and uh, I've been coming down here for a couple months now and trying to pour into the youth group here, and I want to tell you guys that the youth group you have here is the future of the church. These are really awesome kids. Pour into them. Cherish them. These are our future, and so I got to see um, a lot of really cool things at camp. God working through them. Um, it's been... <laughs> Sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle trying to, you know, corral them together or even just have, you know, casual conversations can be a little bit rough sometimes. But um, just seeing kids that I've been praying for, that I really have been intently praying for, come to know Jesus, come to know God, and to be, be genuine about it and to devote themselves to him is a, it's really... Um, to say rewarding, but it's a, it's something that I cherish. It's something that I value, and so um, thank you all for that for providing a platform for us to go to camp. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to make that clear that um, you guys have a really great group of kids. We have a really good group of kids, and it was an awesome time. now. They are the church now on that day. They don't have to wait until they're 25, 30. They can impact this church now and impact this community, impact their families. And they learned that this week. We're going to be talking about today a little more, but um, these kids, as, as rowdy as they are and as uh, what's weird is they were quiet, um, but uh, they have a great heart for the Lord. Like Landon, I'm so proud of Landon because every time I talk, you know, they still talk. They, they, they're talkers. And Landon be like, hey, guys, be quiet, please. Be quiet. Try to get his deep voice on. And I was proud of you for that. And uh, Shauna, she actually won the, uh, we had awards at the end of the night, or end of the week, and she won the quietest person award, which, um, what's funny is that once you get her to open up, she's actually not quiet. Um, she's kind of loud, actually. <laughs> but um, all these kids, even though they got a little shy after they, I hope they had a great week, week at camp. Uh, I was talking to your mom, Landon, and you said this better than Fall Street last year, and you were raving about it, and I'm just so glad that even though it was a different scenery, different camp, that you guys had a great time and that Jesus impacted you guys. And, uh, and now I have a job for everyone else that did not go to camp. Be there for them. Be there to help them grow because a lot of these kids made decisions, but they had, it's, it doesn't stop at camp. It doesn't stop after you walk down the altar. That's when it begins. And it's your guys' job as the church to build them up, to train them up so they can go out and make disciples and tell people about Jesus. And to tell what they have experienced and what God's done for them. And I just want to thank you guys, actually. Um, for some of these kids, they can't afford to go to camp. And you guys provided the money. Even though, even though you guys didn't go to camp, even though you weren't there physically, the money that you guys gave, the prayers that you guys were praying for us, that, that impacted us a lot. That you guys put us at camp. And because God used you to do that, these kids got saved. They went to camp and made decisions that will impact their eternity. And uh, for the youth, I just want to um, give all of you guys a round of applause that um, you guys did great. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, I also want to thank uh, you guys for hiring me to do this. Like, um, I think Monday was my one year anniversary with you guys, and I have loved the platform 
you give me that um, I I came here as a, I think I was 20, was I 20 at the time? I'm a much wiser older man now. I'm 21. Um, I think I was, yeah, I was 20 years old. Man, I was so long ago. Um, but I just want to thank you guys for taking in a hippie looking shorts. Like when I first met Tim, I was wearing shorts and had a bed head. So um, I just woke up, it was new. So that gives you any context. I just want to thank you guys for letting me come and just pour into this kid that you guys trust me, that you guys give me the opportunity just to, even though it's a little rocky at times, to have fun with these kids. And uh, yeah, just thank you guys. Okay, so we're just going to jump right in. Uh, I need you guys to flip to the book of Matthew, chapter 25, and we'll start at verse 14. Matthew 25, 14. Um, while you guys are flipping, uh, I'm going to talk about a few things we learned at camp, a few themes. Um, also, when you're there, say cheese. It's a requirement for everything I do. You have to say cheese. Um, or Borson. Borson's another good name. So, a few things we learned over, the, over this last week is, number one, it's your job to teach people the, the truth of the gospel with your words and prove the gospel of Jesus through your actions. We were just talking about it. It doesn't, it doesn't stop when you get saved. You have to keep growing and keep growing closer to Jesus. And as I was explaining to the kids that um, it's like me, like say me and Andrea, we just became friends. Are we going to be friends for very long if we never talk? No. It's like, so when you start a relationship with Jesus... It has to be an ongoing relationship. It has to be, like, just like me and Andrew could talk like that. Just keep talking and talking and talking to him, and that relationship will grow. Sorry, my tablet was showing off. Um, the second thing we learned is you don't have to know everything to grow God's kingdom with his help. You just have to be faithful. Guys, for you guys that made decisions, for you guys that, for me, I would say that I am not a theologian. I do not know everything. Um, we had debates while our camp. They were... Very funny and intense, but um, I still don't know everything. You guys, what's funny is we'll know, never know everything. So God's going to use you for what you know and where you're at. So don't let knowledge be the stop to going and sharing with that. Don't let that be stop to just sharing the gospel. Because what's crazy is that you're saved and God changed your life. That's enough to go share with people. The third thing we learned was if you mess up, God can still use you. All you have to do is repent and keep going in the right direction. So we wrote down those sins. We wrote down those guilt, that pain we had. What's crazy is even though you did those things, even though we all sinned, because what's crazy is we're all sinners. We're born into sin. Once we're saved, God can use this thing. You're, we're still going to mess up. Because why do we need a Savior if we're already perfect? God's going to use you where we're at. That doesn't mean, hey, I'm going to keep sinning against you, God. Because sin and God do not coexist. That's why there was a gap between us in the first place. So the fourth thing. If you follow God to the end, you are saved. Perseverance doesn't earn your salvation. Perseverance proves your salvation. That doesn't mean, number one, works do not save you. If you're a good person, that doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Um, if you go and build a house for people in Mexico, that doesn't mean you're saved. It's surrendering your life to Christ. Not just surrendering your life, surrendering everything to Christ and trusting him with your life. That's what saves you. It's not a prayer. It's not a worship song. It's not me talking up here. It's Jesus, period. I also love saying that's, that's a snap ready. Um, <laughs> um, so we're going to hear what Jesus said about all those things. About, hey, what comes after salvation? So Matthew 25, 14 to 30. I actually have to flip here, so give me one second. Um, I'm sorry. Give me one second. Yeah, I didn't hear any cheeses, so we need to actually look for that. Morrison. Um, actually, while I'm flipping, fun fact. There was a kid in our group named Morrison. Now his name's Bobby. Um, have you guys ever seen the, the show King of the Hill? You'll know what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read Matthew 25, 14 through 30. It says, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them to his property, to one who gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also, he who had two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of the servants came and settled the accounts with him. And he who had received five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered me, delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. 
And he who also had two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter the joy of your master. So he also, who had received the one talent, came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your child in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master said, No. Or whispered, eh, Master answered him, You, wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have sc got scattered my seed. And you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And now by coming, I should receive what was mine, my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has, to, who has the ten talents. But everyone who asks will be given more. Oh my gosh, I messed up. Who has more, who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, uh, this is what you call a parable. Who has ever heard of a parable? Hopefully all of us. You guys ever heard of a parable before? You guys have not listened to camp because that's all we're talking about. <laughs> Parables. So, Jesus used this parable to teach his disciples to do what to do this in his absence. So what, did, what was Jesus about to do? He was about to be crucified and ascend to heaven, right? So after his death and resur resurrection, Jesus would ascend back to heaven for a while and then return to gather his followers to himself. In fact, we are still waiting for Jesus to come back. So his words to the disciples then are his words to us now. These words are our words. These are meant for us. They were spoken to his disciples, and they still apply to us now. <coughs> so when the man in Jesus' story went on a journey, we're going to recap a little bit. He gave his servants control over his property with the understanding they would invest and get some kind in return. So they did not, uh, the master did not give these things expecting, hey, go and hide and, you know, carry these things with you. Go and shiver and fear and go run. No, they wanted them, wanted them to invest it to make more. The man only gave each servant what he thought they could handle. When he got back, two of the servants, as we saw, had invested their money and got return, but the third servant had buried his and gained nothing. He blamed his laziness on the fact that his master was powerful and, and could uh, accumulate wealth with or, with or without his help of servants. Sorry, let me get rid of that. I lose my voice a little bit, still kind of rocky. So let me read that again. He blamed his laziness on the fact that his master was powerful and could accumulate wealth with or without the help of his servants. So he, who here has ever had a mom and dad? So all of us. All of us have mom and dad. So who here has ever... So for me, this is a prime example of my laziness. So my mom used to say, hey, lay out the like lunch meat, lay out the taco meat so we can make food tonight. So me being a kid, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna play video games for a little bit. I'm gonna take a nap. And then my mom pulled up from work. I was like, oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to find out super fast, put this in the microwave, because I hadn't, the meat was still in the freezer. So what I did was I put it in the sink, put it in water, and ran. I ran to my room and hid. So who here has ever done something like that before? All of us. I know every single one of you guys. Because I told you guys to clean when we got back from camp, and you went and played on your phones. Uh, but we can all find ourselves making excuses for things we don't do, just like that third servant. So when Jesus, so the master in this is Jesus. He's pointing to himself. I'm sorry, no. when, the, when Jesus went to heaven to be with God the Father, he entrusted the work of the kingdom to those of us who have put our faith in him. So as Christians, as representatives of Christ, it's our job to proclaim and prove the truth of the gospel to the ends of the earth, ends of the earth, using whatever gifts, talents, abilities, connections, opportunities given us. So, if you guys are getting this, the talents that the Master gave to them, to us, is like Jesus is giving them gifts, opportunities to serve Him. So the first and the second, what did they do? They went out and shared. They went out and invested the money and gained more. So that that's the look. Of a true sign. That's the look of how we should be doing. We should be going out and multiplying. Uh, so, for instance, you guys and I got saved. We've been talking about the gospel a lot. So, our job now that you're saved is one to grow and go share. It's to know Jesus and make him know. So, a lot of times, what do we do instead? We're the third servant. We're the third person. We go and make some excuses not to. It's like, hey, I don't know enough. Hey, I, I just got saved. Hey, um, I can't speak well. Hey, I have a stutter. Hey, um, I have anxiety. Whatever it is, we make excuses for it. And we see what happens. The thing is, is that if we love Jesus, we're going to act like it. One of our biggest themes 
uh, I thought it was a super iconic line. Uh, who here has ever seen Talladega Nights? What is the line, Landon? If you ain't first, you're last. You gotta really hit the ain't. If you ain't first, you're last. So what I said to build on that was like, if Jesus isn't first in your life, if Jesus ain't first in your life, he will inevitably be last. He will be last in your life. So I say that because here's what happens. It's like, hey, I love you, Jesus. I made a decision. So I'm gonna go do pack and do whatever I want. It's like, hey, Jesus, I don't have time for you today. I have sports. Hey, I have school. Hey, I have work. So if everything's gonna be for Jesus, the question is, do we have Jesus in our life? What happens is when we're saved, what happens? We receive the Holy Spirit, we are walking with Christ again. If we never have a want to go and serve Jesus, if we never have a want to worship him, that's when it comes to the question, are we following Christ? And we see first and second servant, they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do what you said, Master. I'm going to go see what you said, Jesus. The third person sits and runs away. And I love how it explains, he already explains the master. It's, uh, it's Actually, it's my notes. Here, my notes. So, he describes him as an angry, kind of like a tyrant of a master. He's like, hey, you're going to get on to me, you're going to be scared. So, God does have wrath. He has wrath. He is, but what's the difference between our anger, our wrath, it's his righteous anger. The thing is, is God is a loving man. So much that he sent his son Jesus to die for. Because we were wicked sinners and he loved us. And the biggest thing when it comes to following Christ, the biggest thing is that like Jesus came to die for us, but we have to be obedient. We have to be obedient to what he says. So uh, obedience is very important because that's how God uses us. Um, God takes our obedience and turns it into whatever he has in mind to glorify himself. So for instance, you guys gave to church, gave to camp. You guys didn't go to camp, but you gave to camp, you sent your kids. That's what being, being obedient to God. And the resulting, these kids got saved. You had nothing to do with it, we were just obedient to God. For us, working and helping Andrew and Sharon, all of us that helped, we were obedient and God worked. We could have easily been like, I don't feel good. I don't want to preach tonight. My voice is gone. Hey, um, these kids are kind of kind of crazy. I don't want to get my money. The thing is, because you guys were obedient, we were able to have camp. Because Andrew and Sharon came and cooked, these kids were able to not die because they were hungry. Or thirsty. Or, I'm, I'm not allowed to lie to you. They drink a lot of pop, so I don't know if they drink any water. We're just lucky to be here. But um, for Megan, she gave by giving us energy drinks, which helped us get through the week, resulting in us being able to share the gospel with these kids. And the thing is, when we are obedient to God, He doesn't always tell, it, tell us what it is. We just have to be obedient. And most of the time, we don't even get to see what happens. So I went on a mission trip to Edmonton, Alberta, which is in Canada. Um, I talked to people, shared the gospel with people. There were a few guys. There's a guy named Ani Ruth. He was a, do you know what a Sikh is? It is part of, the, it's part of Hindu, I believe. Is it Hindu? And I shared the gospel with him, and I haven't seen him since. I haven't talked to him. I haven't even heard his name, except for, I haven't seen his name since I went last year. And I have no idea what happened to him. I have no idea if he came to Jesus. But that's part of being obedient, is you might not know what happens. You might not see the fruit of your labor. But God's going to use that. He's going to use those seeds that you threw out, and he's going to work with that. All it takes is being obedient. All God expects of us is to do. All expect. Oh my gosh, I'm going to go All God expects us to do is listen to Him as He helps us understand what His instructions are. So, for for instance, we had three people serving in ministry. Uh, I think it was James, Danny, and Alex, and Grayson. Where's Grayson? I think Grayson is it Grayson? Okay, so we had a couple kids surrounded in ministry. What's awesome, I was telling James this, is that you're not going to know what it is immediately. You're not going to know what God has for you immediately. The biggest thing is you have to be obedient to him and listen and be patient. Because if we're like, hey, I can listen to God has for my life and we choose it, that's obviously not what God has for our lives. That's what we want for our lives. Like for the longest time, I wanted to be a football player. To be honest, I was not very good at football. Okay, I think I thought I was. I thought I was the next. I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll say something. You guys know Troy Aikman. You guys know Troy Aikman is. That was a little, little older. Um, but Troy Aikman, I thought I wasn't a quarterback either, so I don't know what I was thinking. Um, what's a fun fact? Actually, my coach, my coach, coach Troy Aikman. That's not a flex, kind of is. But um, I thought that that's what I was going to be. And then I was like, I got to college. I'm, like, I'm obviously not going to the NFL, so I'm going to go be a football coach. And this was after actually I surrendered to ministry. I was like, hey, I'm going to go do this. And what's crazy is God was like, hey, actually, 
you know, all that stuff, you won't yourself, let's go do this instead. And God is taking me farther than I could take myself. I'm here talking to you guys right now. Four, five years ago, I got saved, and I was a little punk. I'm still kind of a punk, but I was a big punk. Like, I was worse than all these kids, and I was, I was crazy, and then even Kristen can say it. Freshman year, I was a little punk. We worked together at the PCM, and what's awesome is the Lord moved in my life, not because I was like, hey, you know what, I'm going to go do this myself, no, because I met him at work. And I think that could be said for all of us. Tim, you told me you were a little punk. And what's awesome is that you're where you're at, not because of you, but because of God. And so here's the thing. If we spend the rest of our time on earth doing just that, being obedient, we'll earn his well-doing, good, and faithful servant. Again, that's not because we worked for it. That's because we're obedient to him. However, if, like I said earlier, if we are content to keep what we know, to keep the things we want to do and do it for ourselves, it comes to the question, hey, did I go down to the altar? Did I say that prayer to glorify myself or glorify God? Because I went down to the altar once. Seventh grade year, I went down, and I was like, can't. And I was like, oh my gosh, when I get home, mom and dad are be proud of me. Oh my gosh, my friends are going to, my friends are going to be like, why don't I do it? But when I totally surrendered my life to Christ, it wasn't because it was like, hey, I'm not bringing glory to me. I bring glory to you, God. And the greatest words God can ever hear is, I can't, but you can. Because we can't do it on our own. Because we did, we actually, we did, and you see where we're at in the world now. We're trying to do it on our own. We're trying to fill our, whatever that void is, which is a God void. We're trying to fill that void with everything but God. So here's the thing. That will begin as we're saying. The growth of God's kingdom does not depend on us. It depends on him. Uh, me and Crystal were talking about this on a, a ride home from church one day. Uh, Shane Crew actually said, I love Shane Crew listening to him. If you guys haven't listened to him, uh, Landon loves him too. It's yeah. not much. Um, but he was talking about your ministry, you can you can uh, you can decide only the depth, not the width. Which that means you can only decide what you go over, you can only decide how deep you guys go into the word. You gotta give God the depth or the width. If God decides how far it goes, you decide how, what you talk about. Which, which honestly, God should be working on you to talk about what he wants to talk about. That's him. It's, it's really quiet in here. It's usually not this quiet. It's funny to me. Um, so here's the thing. To know God is to love him and want to see him glorified. To love him is to make a habit of obeying him, even if we mess up sometimes. Guys, for the guys, for the kids that got saved this week, don't hide away from what you just did. Be proud of what you just did. Because Jesus says, if you profess me before man, I'll profess you before my father. Guys, be proud of what you did and go tell everybody about it. Because what's awesome is God can use you to affect your family. God can use you to affect your friends, to affect that school. Because this thing, you guys right here can make a difference. You can set this talent and fire for God. You guys can change the school, not because of you, but because of God. And what's awesome is that, understand this, I want to understand this really, really, really clearly. The man is not wicked because he didn't give the money or invest the money. It's because he didn't trust God or trust the master with that. The master doesn't need the money. God doesn't need your obedience. The thing is, the master, the master threw the servant out because he didn't know they, he, oh my gosh, the servant was not obedient because he didn't love the master. The biggest thing is, is guys, I need you to understand one thing. You can only be saved by love you have for God, by God's love. You can only be saved because you surrender, not because, hey, like I said earlier, because over one free set, you do good things. Because all these things. The only thing that can save you is Jesus being your Lord. And when it happens, Jesus should be first your life, Jesus should always be in your life. And what's crazy is Jesus will forever and ever and ever be in your life. I was telling the kids this. I said this at least 20 times at camp. What's awesome is that when, for the kids who made this decision, I said, it's cool, is that Jesus, this isn't just a week-long decision. This isn't just a lifetime decision. This is an eternity decision. And think about this. Think about, you guys have ever heard a song, Forever and Ever, Amen, by Randy Travis. You know that song? Hopefully. That's a good song. But um, I was talking to him, and think about that, but forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, plus a thousand more evers, amen. God is going to be there. Once you make a decision, you will have eternity with Jesus forever. 
contentment, content. And guys, I just want to encourage you guys that, hey, if you've never made that decision, if you've never put Jesus first and foremost in your life and surrendered your life, this is your chance. But guys, why wait? Why wait to make, make that decision? Because the thing is, we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised to drive home. We're not promised to make it out of the sanctuary. And what's awesome is Jesus loves you so much. And Jesus loved you so much that that sin you're thinking of, that sin that you're dealing with, he died for that. When he was on that cross, he wasn't like, man, these guys suck. I'm doing this to be like, God told me. No, it's because he loved you. And guys, all he wants from you is to surrender your life and obey him. And you might think, oh, this is going to be boring. Jesus is going to just say, hey, you can't do this and this and this. What's crazy is those ten things that we can think of right now, those ten commandments, those are the things we can't do. What's awesome is with God, we can do so much more. And I'll tell these kids, that, kids this. I think I have more fun now that I'm a Christian. Those things that I was having fun with, the things I was going to do, party and drinking, whatever you think of, those things always left me empty. Those things always wanted me, want, like, leaving me wanting for more. And what's awesome is with Jesus, that Jesus fun, the, the Jesus fun that I had, is leaving me empty. It's overflowing from me. And guys, for you, the kids that got saved, for everyone in this room that got saved, I want to encourage you that Jesus is not a one-time decision. Jesus is a daily decision. So to follow him, you need to be in his word. You need to be working, not working, walking with him daily. And that means that doesn't have to be, oh, I'm going to have an all-out worship session in my car. That could be anywhere. That could be praying, reading your word. That could be just in your job, worshiping him, glorifying him. That could be sharing with your brother or sister who's not saved. That could be in any way that glorifies him. And guys, well, I mean, I'm still young in my faith. I still am, compared to like Tim, I am young. What's cool is that Tim is there to help. What's cool is I'm here to help you guys. And the thing is, if you're an older person in the church, if you're an older Christian, you could be 25 and still be a wiser, older Christian. Pour into them. Pour into that young kid who just got saved. Pour into that youth worker who needs help. Or pour into someone's older than you. Guys, we are lives to be about Jesus, period. And if you want to make this decision right now, if you want to come down and rededicate your life, if you just want to come down and pray over a sin you're dealing with, this is the time. Guys, I'm going to pray, and then Jeff's going to come up. And just remember, guys, just make this about him. Make this about him alone. And, all right, God, thank you. Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to just come and worship you. I pray that during this time that we just focus on you, focus on you alone. I pray that we can just realize it's not through Cameron period, it's not through Crystal period, it's not through Andrew period, but it's by you and you alone, Jesus period, that we can have salvation. Father, I love you and I just praise you and pray that you show up and show off this place. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. She made two decisions. And that's awesome. Maverick got saved at camp, surrendered his life to Christ. And what's cool is that this is their first step, this is the second step for obedience to Christ. And I just want to celebrate them and just give them the biggest wave of encouragement we can. So. Maverick Barnes, this is Dawn's great grandson. Are you the mom or the grandma? Yeah. I could have fixed this. I can tell you're related, you and yeah, okay, all three of them. Anyway. 
Maverick Barnes, and I like this, Alexandria Perry. I know her as Alex. They both come forward making confessions of faith uh, and are going to follow after baptism in like five minutes. Okay? If you're in favor of this and the angels in heaven rejoicing over this, say amen. 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 Uh, I would say this, the other three that made decisions for salvation, would you like to come forward now? And we will complete with baptism in the next week or two. Yes, Shauna. And Madison is not here in Keegan. Is not here. Both of them will catch them next week. Anyway, Shauna, and, and I didn't know Shauna was quiet. I never did get to hear that. Uh, she, she talked. Anyway, Shauna also comes making a profession of faith public and will be following after your baptism. If you rejoice in this, say a hearty amen. 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 All right, with that, Jeff's going to lead us in a song. We will baptize these two. Our kids are going to stay down front after the baptism and the service. You come, love on them, let them know you're praying for them, and uh, this is your cue for you guys to go. There we go. No, you go get, yeah, there you go. All right, go get changed. There we go. Anyway, we'll be following up with them, uh, baptism, and I'm as excited as four that have uh, surrendered to ministry and looking at how we can, uh, we can help them in their Christian growth, and you never know what God is going to do with these young people. And I am glad that Cameron did point out that they are the church of the day. They're not the children of the future. They're just as much part today. <clears throat> knuckleheads, bruises, and everything else as you can. Thank you guys for being patient uh, and, and giving them an experience of what it's like to do a service, and I hope that there will be more that will come in the future uh, and, and just involving our youth in this. Jeff, you're up there. Please turn, well, turn with me to page 540 as we sing Take My Life and Lead Me Lord. Page 540. This is Alex that we mentioned before. Um, she's given her life to Christ. She's been a stir in the ministry. Um, I just want to say I'm very proud of her. Uh, she's going to Superstar with us also. She, uh, she somehow got through an interview and we didn't realize she was saved. I don't know if that's an us problem, but um, I just want you guys to rejoice with her. Alex, you believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior, that you came, lived a perfect life, and died for your sins and rose again? Yes. Maverick. Um, I want to brag about Maverick a little bit and say that I knew he was going to do it before he was going to do it. 
bit. Um, and me and Chris were like passionately saying that he whispered. But uh, I just want to say I'm proud of him. I just want to say that uh, he is a great kid. He was our best helper of the week. He came and did whatever we asked him. He actually asked us before we asked him. And I just want to encourage you guys to say that he's a great kid. He's poor and he's uh, right now. We believe that Jesus Christ lived a perfect life. Died on the cross. Let's have a word of prayer and then we'll be dismissed. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these who have come to be baptized, for these who have come and shared their lives and their testimonies with us. And Lord, I just pray that we would rise to the occasion to be mentors and encouragers to them and as we go out to be witnesses to all.